Hello, and thank you for joining me for this basic online water smart irrigation guide hosted by the City of Bozeman's Water Conservation Division. My name's Chelsea. Feel free to contact us by phone or email if you have questions or concerns, or visit bozemanwater.com for more water saving information. During this presentation, I will briefly discuss the following topics. Why should Bozeman residents practice outdoor water efficient techniques? Opportunities to get paid for system upgrades through the city's Water Conservation Division. Basic information on checking and maintaining your irrigation system components. And a brief overview of water efficient watering schedules. The image on the slide was taken at the Museum of the Rockies, where the city has a water smart demo garden for residents to view and gain inspiration from. There is also a demo garden located at City Hall. Let's quickly discuss where Bozeman gets its water. You may not know this, but Bozeman has a limited water supply and is fed from three main sources. Lyman Spring, which is located in the Bridger Mountain Range and accounts for 20% of Bozeman's water. Bozeman Creek is fed through Sourdough Canyon and accounts for 40% of Bozeman's water. Highlight Creek is fed from Highlight Reservoir and accounts for 40% of Bozeman's water. You might be thinking, this sounds like a lot of water, but the reliability of these resources depends on winter snowpack levels and the timing of snowmelt in the spring. Bozeman only receives an average of about 16 inches of precipitation a year, which makes Bozeman a semi-arid climate that is considered drought prone. This brings up all the more reason to be water smart. And if Bozeman's drought-prone climate isn't convincing enough, let's further dig into why we should all be practicing outdoor water conservation. The water supply and demand graph on the right shows a projected population growth in blue using Bozeman's recent estimated annual population growth rate of 4.3%. If the population continues to grow at this rate and we continue to use the same amount of water per person, then our demand could meet our supply by 2031. The pie chart image on the left shows that 50% of Bozeman's total annual treated water goes to irrigating lawns in May through September. This is why it is important to cut back on unnecessary water consumption wherever possible, especially outdoor water use. There are many ways you can be efficient with your outdoor water use while maintaining a healthy landscape. If you are a Bozeman water customer, then one of the ways to be water efficient is to utilize the City of Bozeman's Outdoor Water Conservation Rebate Program. Retrofit means that you are replacing inefficient or faulty irrigation system components for efficient ones, or adding water efficient components to existing systems. New construction means that there was no previously existing irrigation system and a system is being installed as a new build. Weather-based irrigation controllers take into account local weather and real-time evapotranspiration data, which can then trigger a reduction in the runtime of your watering schedule. This is completed via Wi-Fi connection. And if the controller is programmed properly by changing the default settings, the smart controller can reduce your outdoor water use by up to 25%. Rebates of up to $250 for retrofit exist and $150 for new construction when purchasing a water sense labeled irrigation controller. The top right photo shows a rain sensor installed. Rain sensors can temporarily shut off the irrigation schedule after a certain amount of rain has fallen and can reduce approximately 18% of outdoor water use if rain falls within a watering day. You can get a $50 rebate to add rain sensors to your existing systems and $30 for new construction. Multi-spray multi-trajectory nozzles or MSMT rotating nozzles are one of the biggest outdoor water saving rebate opportunities. Because Bozeman's soils are extremely rich in clay and can only absorb so much water within a given time, it is important to have sprinkler nozzles with a low output rate in order to allow time for the soil to absorb the water that is applied, which is exactly what MSMT rotating nozzles do. 
Approximately 350 gallons of water per nozzle per season can be reduced by swapping out traditional fixed or van nozzles with MSMT nozzles. We will discuss nozzle types later in this presentation. You can get up to $5 per nozzle with retrofits and $3 per nozzle for new construction. Drip irrigation can be beneficial in areas that may benefit from turf removal and the addition of perennial drought tolerant plantings. Drip irrigation can reduce water use by approximately 75%. The city's rebate program now offers rebates on spray to drip irrigation conversion kits. Get up to $250 for retrofitting areas of high water use vegetation into drought tolerant gardens. To go with the drip irrigation rebates, the city offers a drought tolerant plant rebate, minimum purchase of $100 and up to $200. Replacing turf with a beautiful drought tolerant landscape filled with color and pollinators is one way to help you save outdoor water use. Visit bozemanwater.com and select the water conservation button for more information on rebate eligibility and product qualifications and to apply for rebates. The City of Bozeman's Water Conservation Division also offers free sprinkler system assessments in the summer months. A trained staff member from the Water Conservation Division will assess the quality and efficiency of residential irrigation systems and provide a site-specific report that includes a list of recommendations for repairs or upgrades, along with a recommended watering schedule tailored to the inspection site. Since this program started in 2018, the Water Conservation Division has completed 216 residential assessments and it is estimated that if every property implemented the recommended watering schedule provided, that there would be an average savings of about 700 gallons per week during the peak season. These book up quickly, so call in advance to get on the list. Want to complete your very own sprinkler system assessment? Let's go over a few steps on how to complete an irrigation system checkup, which will help you save money, time, and water. Three main steps for a system checkup are completing a site inspection, performance testing, and proper irrigation scheduling techniques. Before we go into a, how to complete a site inspection, I want to review the different types of sprinkler heads that you might encounter. Two things are common within each sprinkler head type. The sprinkler head arc, which is the horizontal angle of the water spraying out of the sprinkler head, and the sprinkler head throw distance, or radius. This is how far the sprinkler head will throw water onto the landscape. Traditional fixed nozzle pop-ups are the most common of pop-up spray types and are typically installed in areas 4 feet to 15 feet in width. The average water output is about 1.5 inches per hour. Variable arc nozzle pop-ups, or vans, look very similar to traditional fixed nozzles, but vans have adjustment options for the arc on the collar. Vans also output up to 4 inches per hour, which is significantly greater than traditional fixed pop-up sprinkler nozzles. This is why it is so important to know what type of sprinkler heads you have in each zone before creating a watering schedule and making sure there are no mixed sprinkler head types within a single zone. Rotors output water at half the rate than that of fixed pop-ups and are ideal for larger areas about 16 feet to 40 feet in width. Multi-spray, multi-trajectory, or MSMT rotating pop-up nozzles are the most water-efficient nozzles because of Bozeman's clay-rich soil. These nozzles apply water at a much slower rate than traditional or van pop-up nozzles, which allows for better water infiltration into the soil. Arc and throw distance can be adjusted using a manufactured tool for most makes and models. The sprinkler head has an average water output of about 0.5 inches per hour. Drip irrigation applies water directly to the root of the plants to minimize outdoor water waste. This presentation does not address drip irrigation in detail, but it is very important to check and know where your drip irrigation is located and check throughout the season for lost emitters, end caps that may have popped off, or any holes or leaks within the system that are causing rapid and unnecessary water loss. 
Now that you can identify what type of sprinkler heads you may encounter in your irrigation system, let's chat about the steps for a basic site inspection. You can dig up approximately 25 grams of soil to complete a hand soil texture test in order to determine what type of soil is found on your property before you get started. There are how-to videos for this if you search online. You'll want to draw a map of your property before you get started. If you have any trees, garden beds, or hardscapes like driveways or sidewalks, be sure to include these. Next, you can turn on your irrigation controller to test each zone individually. Some controllers have a test button option that will run each zone for five minutes consecutively. As each zone runs individually, you'll want to map out each sprinkler head in each zone. Or note if you have drip irrigation and if it's working efficiently. You'll want to make notes on any sprinkler heads that might be damaged or in need of adjustments or upgrades. You will also want to note any special site conditions such as water pooling after the system was turned on, full or part shaded areas, full or part sun areas, elevation changes, dry patches, or water overthrow onto the pavement. Now let's discuss a little bit more in detail some of the common sprinkler head issues that you might find during your site inspection. First, we'll take a look at what to look for. Broken or damaged sprinkler components might appear to be spewing water, water pooling, water flowing quickly, low pressure, or heads that might be trickling. Mixed sprinkler head types within a single zone, you will find different sprinkler head types within the same zone. Drip, pop-up spray, and rotor sprinkler heads should all be on their own individual zones. Sunken or buried sprinkler heads may appear to be heads that are not visible when the system is off, heads that cannot spray above the surrounding turf, or water spewing at the ground surface. Tilted or misaligned sprinkler heads would be perpendicular to the ground, and they might be indicated by yellowing areas, hot spots, or overthrow onto the pavement. Obstructed sprinkler heads could be obstructed by shrub, trees, plant limbs, lamp posts, electrical boxes, fences, furniture, toys, and mailboxes that might be in the pathway of the sprinkler head's throw. For broken or damaged sprinkler components, you can replace the broken or damaged components. Minor sputtering may be caused by debris within inside the nozzle. The nozzle can be removed and then rinsed with water. For mixed sprinkler head types within a single zone, you'll want to pick the most appropriate sprinkler head type or nozzle type and change all heads that do not match the selected type. For sunken or buried heads, you'll want to dig up the sprinkler head body. Add the appropriate length of extension or riser to the sprinkler head body to give it an extension above the ground. Tilted or misaligned heads can be adjusted by digging up the sprinkler head body and aligning the body upright in the ground. You may need additional soil for support. Obstructed sprinkler heads can be fixed by removing the obstruction if possible or moving the sprinkler head in front. You could also consider removing the turf surrounding the obstruction and cap that sprinkler head off. Let's talk about irrigation system performance testing that can help you create a customized watering schedule. You can complete a catch can test using tuna cans, graduated cylinders, or any low container with a flat bottom. All containers must be the same size for the proper measurements and calculations. You'll want to first identify the sprinkler zone that you'll wish to test. Zones with rotors deliver less water than zones with pop-ups, so you'll want to complete a test for each zone type. Place 12 flat bottom containers evenly throughout the zone and at least approximately one foot away from the base of each sprinkler head within the zone. The number of containers used may depend and vary on the size of the zone. Run each sprinkler zone for 15 minutes. At the end of each 15 minute cycle, Use a ruler to measure the water in each container and add up the total inches of water for each zone. Calculate output, this is also called precipitation rate, of water for each zone. This is done by taking the sum total of water measured over the number of containers that were used. 
This will give you the amount of water your sprinkler zone used in 15 minutes. You can use the chart below, which is also located in our Water Smart Plant Guide, to help gauge how long each zone should run based on the inches of water that your sprinkler zone has output. DIY catch can test rental kits are available at the City of Bozeman's Water Conservation Office. By completing a simple catch can test, you can customize your watering schedule based on your actual irrigation system output. Let's discuss the cycle and soak watering method, which can help improve root depth growth, creating a resilient and healthy turf while applying less water. The cycle and soak watering method breaks out one run time into two or three shorter run times. For example, if you have each run zone running for 20 minutes, then the cycle and soak watering schedule would translate into two cycles of 10 minutes. You'll want to leave at least 45 minutes of soak time in between run time cycles. If you have more than eight zones, you may have to decrease this soak time to accommodate the efficient watering window from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. On the screen, we show a generalized watering schedule specific for turf grass. This schedule was created using historical climate data from Bozeman and specifications for each of the sprinkler head types. You'll want to note that your irrigation system may require more or less time based on the actual performance, application rate, and weather conditions. Monitor your grass and adjust any generalized watering schedules as needed throughout the season. That wraps up our presentation for basic water smart irrigation techniques and resources. Just as a reminder, the city's water conservation division offers incentives to Bozeman water users. Free sprinkler system assessments are available in the summer months outdoor rebates for high efficiency irrigation system components, and keep an eye out for our Water Smart Plant Guide, which is updated yearly and filled with helpful Water Smart landscape and irrigation tips and information. Thank you for watching our video. Feel free to contact us via email at waterconservation at bozeman.net or by phone at 406-582-3220. Thank you.